way we actually wake up here. Good morning, Nahida. Uh, wait. Now that Paimon remembers everything, should we instead say good morning, Lesser Lord Kusanali? <sighs> Uh-oh, what's... Hey, what's wrong, Nahida? You don't look too good. I'm afraid that what you're thinking right now is correct. Did Dunyarzad already disappear? No way! Are... Are we too late? The real Dunyarzad's consciousness has indeed disappeared. It can no longer endure the constant dream harvesting. Ooh. Another one by the dust. And it's kinda awful because we keep resetting, resetting, resetting. And I was actually worried. Paimon can't believe it. Wait, so what about that other Dunyarzad? Just what is she? Is she also going to disappear? She's actually something like a puppet, but not completely. The real Dunyarizad's consciousness could no longer keep playing her role in this dream. So another Dunyarizad appeared to replace her in the dream. Just like the grass and the trees, that Dunyarizad is just a building block of the dream that helps to keep it going. But personality-wise, she's nothing like the real Dunyarzad. Puppets are stiff, and can't copy a living person's vitality. After all, they're just there as filler. You know, speaking of which... The old Dunyarzad might not have been too different from a puppet. Dunyarzad truly believed that she met you within her consciousness. And it was you who inspired her! So you do remember her after all! Yes. Back then, her family was overly protective of her. No one cared about her personality or thoughts. It was as if she only lived to stall her Elazar. I just gave her a little wisdom, so she could look at life in a new way. So that she could be her own person. But even so, she still... Far from it. I'm still a long way off from being a real Archon. I couldn't even save her. If I were a competent Archon, I wouldn't have let my most faithful follower die at the Subzerus Festival with so many regrets. Please don't beat yourself up over it, Nahida. It's the Sage's fault, and theirs alone! I... I'm not beating myself up. All I did was to rationally observe the distance between myself and a real Archon. Don't be like that, Nahida. Even real Archons are still allowed to be sad. Yeah, let me just bring Johnny and... Beto. Sorry, why did I just say Beto? I mean A, to actually consult you. Venti? Who cares about Venti? To prevent more tragedies like this, we must end the samsara as soon as possible. Great, but how do we do that? Although the Subzerus Festival dream is under the Akasha's control, only humans can dream. Even the Akasha is unable to create them. That means this dream belongs to a host who created it. Huh? So, how should we find that person? Well, if this is someone's dream, then everything here must come from deep within their consciousness. Okay, so I have three guests. They're here, the dancer girl, or do ya? Although, do ya? I think she acts out the list now. Oof. Man. I really feel sorry because if it was an option to actually, I don't know, at least, I don't know, make a mess and let the, the dancer at least dance for once and at least that be her last thing to see. 
Man, I feel very sorry. And I feel sorry for an APC. Which means, with the power of imagination, they can change anything in this dream. Imagination? What do you mean by that? Imagination means breaking through what you perceive as normal. Like when a server at a tavern brings a plate to you, you'd naturally assume that food is on it. However, if you're the dream's host and you become aware that you're dreaming, when you imagine gold and more on the plate, the dream will respond in kind, and the server really will bring you gold and mora. But right now, our host is unaware that this is a dream. No matter how many times they're served, it will always be food. Find some way to make that person realize that they're dreaming. Usually, once that happens, the person will wake up and the dream samsara will be broken. How are we going to find them, though? If it could be anyone, it'd be like looking for a needle in a haystack! And even if we did find them, how are we supposed to make them realize they're dreaming? After all, like you said, don't wake a sleepwalker. It's extremely difficult, yes. But the only ones who can do it are you two. Remember, Everything you've achieved up to this point has all been for the sake of finding the host and ending the samsara. As for me... Uh, during this time, I'll be out of town. Out of town? Are you going to that place full of dreams where the Traveler went? Yes. I, I want to try something. There must still be a small wisp of possibility. Hurry and go! Dreams are supposed to be fantastical, romantic, and full of pleasant surprises. Unnecessary things like this samsara need to end. Oh, she's ready <sighs> to make a havoc. Paimon's still a little upset that we've come this far only for Dunyarzad to... She was such a good person, with such a simple wish. But fate was against her. Why do I feel now in every nation we're gonna have that NPC that's gonna die? Somehow I feel that they're gonna redo this. I mean, have we played to... Which one was... Kazuha Soi part 1 was or part 2? But again, this is a 50-50 chance and we're gonna see after. Yeah, saving Dunyarzad is what kept us going this whole time. But we mustn't lose hope, Traveler. Dunyarzad would definitely want to see us save everyone else. So let's break the Samsara for her sake. Paimon's wondering, do you think the Sages would get one of their own to be the host of this stream? Feels like it would be easier to control it that way, no? beyond their control, like Nahida and us. So, who do you think the host of the dream is? Really? Where did this come from? Really? Him out, out of all the people? Really? For some reason, you were so obsessed with the here. A minute ago, and now we're back to NPCs. Oh, that would make sense. Ferris, the Knight of Flowers, is a symbol of the whole Subzeru's festival, right? Pretty core character. Let's go ask him some questions, shall we? Wasn't the dancer more important? It's like saying that the elf are more important than Santa. Hmm, you're back. You left in a hurry last time. Is everything okay? Everything's fine, just... Um... It's a little hard to explain. Uh... Would you mind taking...
taking part in a little experiment with us? An experiment? That came out of nowhere. I'm listening, though. What do you need me to do? Could you... make a wish? You want me to make a wish? Is that a new sub zeros festival tradition or something? Let's cross it! More wishing! <laughs> I don't know okay. why, but that line okay. shit hard. My wish. My wish. Um, okay. I'm a little nervous saying this out loud, but I want Miss Dunyarzad to be happy. Oh. I noticed earlier that she looked a bit down, and she wasn't really talking to anyone. She just doesn't seem like herself. She's always so gentle and kind, and all the kids love her. I've also wondered if the reason she asked me to be Ferris Knight of Flowers is because I'm special to her, or something. So, you have a crush on Dunyarzad? Uh, <laughs> oh, is it that obvious? After what I just said, I guess it is. When she placed the hat of the Knight of Flowers onto my head, she said to me, I want everyone to have a happy sub -Zerus festival. What she didn't realize was that I'm not that interested in how everyone else feels. In that moment, I just wanted to be her Knight of Flowers for the rest of my life. Fifty years, a hundred years, I'll serve her till the end of time. Okay, yeah, that was a bit much. Felt like the right moment to get it off my chest, but <clears throat> that was pretty embarrassing. Okay, I'm ready to make my wish. I would like Miss Dunyarzad to appear in front of me right now with a smile on her face. Here goes. Please come true. Three, two, one. I'm gonna open my eyes. Oh. Uh... Oh, you're... What? Farky? Uh, sorry, but only one portion of Yalda candies per person. Back home you go. <laughs> uh, nice try, you two. Anyway, never mind. I don't need to see her appear right in front of me. As long as she's happy. <laughs> uh, guess he isn't the host of this dream after all. Should have expected it wouldn't be this easy. It seems like everyone who knows Dunyarzad loves her, but none of them has any idea that she. My lady, step back. That sounds like Dia! Oh, right. This is when Dunyarzad bumps into the kidnappers. Huh? But Dia can handle them. Hey, Traveler! Oh, it's you. Great timing. Please take... Hey, this is my job. The homie Yanni's pay me, not you. You... Ugh, fine, all right, knock yourself out. Why are you so worked up anyway? It's not like I don't trust your fighting skills. Anyway, watch yourself. So you got yourself some backup. <laughs> Suit yourself. You're going down. I should be saying that because trust me, the traveler is really have a lot of pent up aggression, and now he wants to let her out. That's close enough. I'll protect you. Go. Fly. Break a leg. Black fly. Observe. Hit. Go. Where do you think you're going? You want this one? Yeah. Yeah. 
Something. Okay, so Paimon's memory is working so far. Anyway, Paimon also remembers that she is staying somewhere around here. She pointed it out to us the night before the Subzeru's festival. Yeah, even if it's only a tiny clue, it'll probably still help us more than this needle in a haystack search. This is the place! It's rude to enter other people's spaces without permission, but desperate times call for desperate measures! Hey! The windows are unlocked! Okay. Uh, Paimon's gonna take a peek inside. This was only a temporary residence, so there was pretty much nothing inside except this book on the table. Should we open it? Wow! Dunyarzad wrote all of this. Sounds like she was always thinking of us even while we were away. Even though she was also busy preparing for the Subzeru's festival and had all her health problems to worry about, she must have wanted to give this to us as a gift on the day of the Subzeru's festival, right? If we hadn't found this book, we never would have known. But now that we know, we can't even thank her. It's Dunyarzad's puppet! Traveler? You must be exhausted! Come to think of it, We've been stuck in this place for a really, really long time. Heck, even the last time we were chatting happily with Denyarzad feels like an eternity ago. Paimon still remembers when we were sitting here, and the way her eyes sparkled when she talked about Nilu's dance of Subzeru's. 
There will always be frustrations in life, but I know that the point of living is not to leave behind any regrets. That was what the real Dunyarzad said, wasn't it? Does that mean... She's the real one? Wait, what? Yes, Traveler. What is it? Oh, so she's still just a puppet. But just now, how come... What? Where are we going this time? Okay, I feel the boss fight is gonna come soon or something. So I better. If you continue to resist, we will have to order an investigation into every single event organizer. The Grand Sage has already granted you much leniency. I advise that you exercise tact. How. How did things turn out like this? Traveler? Uh, you don't have to get involved. He's a sage from the Academia. I don't want to drag you into this. Traveler? Traveler? What the heck are you doing? If you get arrested by the Academia, that's another day gone to waste! Wait, they're not reacting. Have they been scared stiff? Oh, of course. If this is the sage's plan, they wouldn't put themselves through this. So they're just substitutes. What is this? What happened to the Grand Sage and his entourage? Like I said, they symbolize the goddess of flowers. It's just a shame that all the real Bodhisaras went extinct after her death. Yes, the greater lord brought forth new Bodhisaras in memory of the goddess of flowers. But she ultimately could never truly replicate that beautiful shade of purple. shade of purple aren't these flowers real Padisaras? just like the ones from the legend <gasps> i didn't even notice she's so the host odd. did you find these but didn't you just say all the real flowers went extinct after the goddess of flowers passed away so al yeah what's going on here uh huh You guys are acting weird. But okay, I'll try. Hmm. Okay, I must say that I... That was... My bet was kind of 50 feet even was her all day here. Although we kind of focus much on her. I think we saw her only at the beginner's finish of this. Hey! Host. What a surprise! Purple body Saras don't exist in the real world anymore. But in Nilu's subconscious, they can appear as decorations on the stage. It's just like the example Nahida told us. People assume there will be food on a plate, and Nilu assumed there would be real body Saras in the flower pots. So when you saw the flowers, you instantly knew it was Nilu? But if we want 
want to end the samsara, we need the host to become aware that they're dreaming. How should we make Nilu realize that? Am I dreaming? Huh? Well, that was easy. <laughs> so I'm right. Is this Lesser Lord Kusanali responding to our celebration of the Sabzeru's festival? Wrong guess, but you aren't completely wrong either. Uh, the point is, what made you think this is a dream? As far as you know, people in Sumeru don't dream, right? Yeah, but have you heard the tale of the first sage? To prevent a calamity, he went on a journey to find the Dendro Archon. Ooh, sounds familiar. Dinyarzad told us a story like that when we first arrived in Sumeru City. So it was about the first sage, huh? Yep, but in the part you heard, he hadn't become the first sage yet. There's more to the story. His piety and wisdom were acknowledged by the Dendro Archon, and she finally gave her blessing to him. All kinds of spectacular scenes appeared in front of the First Sage, as if all the knowledge in the world was being painted onto a canvas right before him. He was captivated. After who knows how long, he mastered all the knowledge he could comprehend. Afterward, he said to the Dendro Archon, I miss my parents, my wife, and my children. I've been away from home for far too long. They must be worried. The Dendro Archon smiled. The next second, the sage found himself lying in his bed, as if he had just woken up from a dream. His wife lying next to him said, You're off to search for the Dendro Archon today, aren't you? Have a safe journey, my love. In the end, the first sage took care of many disasters in Sumeru City, and founded the Academia. <sighs> what a happy ending. So, the first sage was dreaming ever since the beginning of the story? He never went on his journey? Yes. But his faith and determination were conveyed to the Dendro Archon, so she blessed him in the form of a dream. Paimon understands where you're coming from now. That's a really interesting connection. But we really gotta wake up soon, like the sage in the story! <laughs>